there are two important things I want to uh, establish, first of all, uh, before we get to talking about our right to use the name. First of all, is it is important for us to understand that even in the Old Testament times, people understood and used the name of the Lord throughout the Old Testament. The second thing we also got to look at is the fact that Jesus himself came in the name of the Father. So when you look at the Old Testament, throughout the Old Testament, there are different names or titles through which God revealed himself to his people. Now the people of God, they used the name of God in various ways. As they walked with God, they used it to sing praises to his name. The reason you and I today can successfully use the name of Jesus is two reasons. One, we need to believe completely in who he is. And second, we need to know, just like those apostles, we've been authorized to use his name. As we continue understanding uh, our right to use the name of Jesus, it's very important to understand what really goes in to be in a position to use that name. And the best example to look at is, of course, Jesus Christ himself. Jesus came in the name of the Father. What did that mean? First of all, it means there is delegated authority. There is authority that's been put upon him because he's come representing the Father. So to come in the Father's name not only means that he's been authorized by the Father, he's here to fully reveal the Father. We must understand that we as believers, every believer has been given the right to use that name, the name of Jesus. You may be a young person, you may be a little child, you may be an adult, doesn't matter what your physical age is. If you are a believer, you have been given the right to use the name. So the right to use the name of Jesus is yours. As a believer, you've been given the right to use his name. What does that mean? Now, in modern language, we will call it the power of attorney. So every believer has been given the power of attorney. Let's talk about what happens when you and I mention the name of Jesus. You see, when you say in Jesus' name, it means you're saying, I am here exercising my power of attorney. I am exercising my delegated authority. I am stepping out on what heaven has authorized me to do. Secondly, when you and I, when we say in the name of Jesus, we are saying, I'm here to do something, representing Jesus, acting on his behalf to do something that he would do if he were present here himself. Thirdly, when you and I say, in Jesus name, it means it brings the very presence of God there. Number four, when you and I say in Jesus name, it means the very person of the Holy Spirit comes there. You know, therefore, it becomes incumbent upon us. It's our responsibility now to represent Jesus accurately. Don't say in Jesus name to do something that Jesus would not do. That's inaccurate representation. So how would you and I know what Jesus would do? Two things. One, see how what Jesus was in the Gospels. Secondly, in order to represent Jesus accurately, listen to the Holy Spirit. Remember we said the Holy Spirit is here in his name. So the Holy Spirit is going to teach us what Jesus is saying. And the Holy Spirit is going to help us represent Jesus accurately. You and I, as believers, have been authorized by Jesus to use his name and understand the spiritual significance of using that name. That when you and I mention the name of Jesus, it means we're stepping out on our power of attorney. We're here to represent and reveal Jesus. We are, we, the very presence of Jesus comes in on that place. Jesus himself is there. When we say in Jesus' name, the very power of the Holy Spirit comes there. When we say in Jesus' name, we are taking his place to do what he would do if he were there. So we must represent him accurately we pray the kinds of prayers and we speak the kinds of things that Jesus would speak and do according to what we see in the Gospels and according to what we hear the Holy Spirit tell us. Do what Jesus would do in his name.